Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. The weeks get crazier as each goes by. It's because we have a crazy president. I say this respectfully uh, to my Republican friends who are supporting Trump who may be listening. But this man has everything going upside down, and it gets very confusing, and it creates a lot of problems. And then there are other things happening for which he has no responsibility, uh, but may not be following up properly. Let's start with Las Vegas. Absolutely crazy what happened in Las Vegas. Sick. You know, we always have deranged people around us. Nuts will always be with us. 59 dead. More than 200 wounded. Some may still die of the wounded group. It was described by someone in the paper, and I quote, as the deadliest shooting in U.S. history. Deadliest shooting in U.S. history. Now, a solution to the problem, we have these, you know, every few years we have these massive slayings by some crazy person with a gun, uh, or by a person with a gun, not necessarily crazy. And we can't get any gun control legislation through Washington. Las Vegas isn't going to do it. Those were basically adults or young adults. What about the 2021 children at Sandy Hook that were killed? If that didn't motivate Congress to pass legislation to control guns, nothing will. And what do you expect? And I say this respectfully, it's true, we all know it. Congress is owned by the NRA, by the gun manufacturers. Lock, stock, and barrel. It fits lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, These people give so much money to our congressional people uh, on both sides of the aisle uh, in their various funds, political funds. And if they don't play ball, eyeball to eyeball, these gun manufacturing reps primarily the NRA, sit in an office, look your congressman or senator in the eye and say, if you don't support this, we're going to run a candidate in a primary against you. And they capitulate. So Las Vegas is sad. There'll be more in Las Vegas as time develops. It's too new of a story other than it's horrendous, it's horrific, it's terrible. Moving on now, I want to talk about Puerto Rico. I'm going to spend a little time on Puerto Rico. Uh, And I raise the question, is Puerto Rico being ignored intentionally? It sort of looks that way, that Puerto Rico is being ignored intentionally. Now, something stinks in Puerto Rico, and it's not the seaweed, and it's not the dead fish. I know that smell. I live in Key West. I've been down here more than 20 years. It's the stink that is coming out of Washington, you know. These people down there, they they got a big hit. They had two hurricane Category 5s within a week. My God, Irma and then Maria. The island's devastated. You see it by the pictures and videos on the the Internet and on television. Uh, Now, Trump is waiting two weeks, more than two weeks, to visit Puerto Rico. He should have had his ass down there within 24 to 48 hours to see how things were going and to motivate the people to say, I'm here to help. We're going to get this done. Instead, he don't care about them. Uh, He doesn't care about them. He doesn't think they're part of the United States. Let me tell you, President Trump, they are a territory of the United States, and the 3.5 million people are American citizens. Now, contrast that with Las Vegas. He waits more than two weeks to go to Puerto Rico. We had the shooting yesterday in Las Vegas, or two, and he's going to be there tomorrow, two days later. Two weeks, two days. Uh, and he may stay two days in Vegas, he said. I, it shows an indication. He, his value position isn't, isn't accurate. Both things are equally important. But get your ass. He should have had his ass in Puerto Rico much sooner and within 48 hours. Now, moving on with this issue, Trump. What did he do this past weekend when he should have been in Puerto Rico? He was in New Jersey at one of his golf courses, one of his clubs, one of his hotels. He ate good food. He had clean drinking water. He had a toilet to sit on because the toilets in Puerto Rico flew, flew away, a lot of them. He had a toilet that could flush, okay? Whereas in Puerto Rico, they don't have water. They don't have power. 
They don't have food. He had air conditioning. They don't have air conditioning. They have no power, no water, or food. And the water they're drinking is coming from polluted streams. When you're so desperate and you're so thirsty and it's been two weeks and you haven't got any clean water, the plumbing system is down, what do you drink? You're forced to drink that dirty, filthy, polluted water in the creeks and the lakes and so forth in Puerto Rico. Now, Trump has been misrepresenting what's going on in Puerto Rico. I say this with all due respect. It's either one of two things. He really doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't care. And he says it the way he thinks it should be, not that it is. Or his subordinates are misleading him because I'm beginning to think his subordinates may be afraid of him and do not want to aggravate him by saying something he might not agree with, even though it is the truth. So he said, and I quote, we have it under really great control. This was last week. We have Puerto Rico really under great control. Mayor Cruz, female mayor of San Juan, Puerto Rico, disagreed with him and said openly, not disrespectfully, no way, Mr. President, you got to see people are dying. Let me tell you about dying briefly for a second. Up to his meeting this afternoon, there were only 16 deaths. He was very proud of that. He says Katrina was in the thousands. It was. It was 1833, 1,833 deaths. Well, tonight it's 34 deaths. And tomorrow it's going to be more in Puerto Rico than 34 deaths because they haven't even made a dent in the outlying districts or in the mountains where tons of people live. Okay. Now, Trump also said with regard to this uh, female mayor, and i got to describe her as such because that's how this man thinks, that those complaining are, and I quote, politically motivated ingrates, politically motivated ingrates, because he thinks he's done so much for them, she should keep her mouth shut and not complain, where in reality he has done next to nothing for Puerto Rico. Now, again, I raise the question, is Puerto Rico being ignored intentionally? Uh, I said in one of my blogs I did yesterday or the day before, that I had a feeling there were two reasons why things weren't going well in Puerto Rico. Uh, one, they are people of color. They're tan. They're not white. They're not black. They're tan. Puerto Ricans are tan. Some of them are black. I've spent time in Puerto Rico as a vacationer, as a tourist. I've also been down there for a lengthy, once for a lengthy period of time doing some environmental work. Uh, for a client in Puerto Rico. So I know the color of the people. This may bother him because I think he's a bigot. He's a racist. The other thing is Mayor Cruz. She's a woman. He don't like women. He likes women to toy with, to play with, etc. But he doesn't respect women, and maybe that's why he isn't paying attention to what he says, and he knocks the hell out of her. Now, a... A publication in Key West is called Conk Life. It comes out once a day. And the publication comes out once a week. Uh, and Conk Life itself has a daily, um, on the Internet, you can get a daily, it's like a blog. You get information off of it. Well, they had a Conk Life in today's edition, or uh, yesterday's edition, rather, I apologize, had a letter to the editor by J.T. Thompson, I don't know the man, apparently a resident of Key West, and he said it well, and I'm going to paraphrase his his, uh, letter to the editor, uh, and he asked the question, why is help slow for Puerto Rico? Uh, He said that Harvey was heading to Texas. Uh, Immediately, the White House relaxed the regulations and delivered troops and resources in advance in advance of Harvey's landfall. The, then, after the landfall, the White House, Trump, assisted Texas quickly and efficiently. And with regard to Irma and Florida, the same thing. They had the regs re- relaxed federally, and they delivered troops and resources before it even hit landfill her, Irma in Florida. And then they sent in the troops and the resources immediately in Florida. True. I know it. I live in Florida. Now, they knew in advance. The White House, Trump knew in advance that Maria was heading to the Caribbean. Nevertheless, the White House did extremely little in advance, whereas they had done it for Texas 
and Florida. See, I also suspect he doesn't think Puerto Rico is part of the United States, even though they are a territory, they're American citizens. They fought in all our wars. They were drafted, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. They went to war in Vietnam. Not like Trump, who said he had something wrong with his feet. He had some kind of spurs or something. Puerto Ricans fought and died. In all the wars, they were drafted. They're American citizens. Okay, now, what's happening there? Well, in reality, and not as Trump would tell us, the people of Puerto Rico are waiting for food, fuel, and drinking water. Imagine drinking polluted water, oil, and debris, everything else. Uh, Eleven days after Maria had hit, Mayor Cruz, the female mayor of San Juan, asked for and I quote, meaningful assistance, unquote, or many could die. Well, Thompson, J.T. Thompson, who wrote uh, this letter to the editor, says, I think this is politically motivated, and I'll tell you why. He says, number one, Texas has 38 electoral votes. The state went for Trump. Florida has 29 electoral votes. The state went for Trump. Puerto Rico has no electoral votes because they're not a state. They're merely a territory. But on the popular vote, they went for Clinton. Now, a good way, maybe Bush should be punished because I think he's screwing everything up. He's not paying attention. And people will die because of it. People will suffer more than die down there. And there he is playing golf this past weekend. Here's what I wish upon him. I'm a former golfer. You want to punish the guy? This is the way to punish him. I hope he hits three balls in the water and three balls in the woods that he can't find. It will drive him crazy. Now, staying with this issue here, let's see. Just a, I want to talk about false news. I, you know, he's always accused false news, fake news. He's always accusing the media of printing and uh, showing fake news. Well. I saw fake news today, and so did you if you were watching uh, his trip to Puerto Rico, which was very short-lived. The first thing he did was he had this meeting in a room around a big table where everyone paid adulation to the president. He had the Army, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard there, a couple of Congress people, uh, (laughs) the small business administration director, the budget director, because he told he told the people there, he says, you know, you're you're screwing up my budget. You're costing us a lot of money. Uh, and he had his budget director there, and everyone, you saw this picture when he had the, his uh, what was it, his cabinet members there several months ago, and they all said, you're doing a wonderful job, Mr. President. And it was the same game today. You're doing a wonderful job, Mr. President. Oh yeah, we are. Thank you for recognizing it. You're right. We're doing a wonderful job. Okay. And the only one that had given this adulation was Mayor Cruz. Uh, she was the only one. She was seated at the last seat at the table. She was the only one that wasn't recognized. Before the meeting, uh, he went up to her and shook hands. I don't know if it was accidental or, or on purpose. And she, you could hear her say, what I said was not political. And he didn't even respond. He turned around and he walked away from the woman. Okay. All right. So now the man's done a great job. Uh, Oh, my God. The pictures you see. Now, he, the pictures were taken after this meeting. I love this. I love this. He went to a village, a small village outside of San Juan, and he stood with a family in front of their home. What a magnificent home. A two-story concrete building, muted yellow and pink colors. Absolutely lovely. Could not see any damage. Parent, the family apparently affluent. And Trump says, how'd you people do that? Ah, we had a little damage in the back, but nothing great. He says, don't, for, don't worry. We're going to take care of you. We are taking care of you. What he didn't do, he didn't go anywhere where there was the destruction that you and I have seen on television for two weeks, okay? Pictures don't lie. Worth a thousand words. He didn't go near anything that was laying on the ground for people to see. Because after all, he and his team are doing a great job. They already have done a great job in starting to clean up Puerto Rico. 
Then the next <laughs> shots we get of him, he's in a room with one, 200 people. They said on TV tonight, 300. I don't think it was anywhere near that amount. And they're all excited to be standing there, and he's in front of a table, and they're yelling and screaming. And they didn't look like they were suffering, <laughs> okay? And I'd like to be there, too. All of us want to go see the President of the United States. There's something special about it. But these people weren't hurting. And what's he doing? You know how he gave up sandwiches in Florida to the Irma victims? There he is behind this table, and he's throwing out rolls of paper towels, one roll at a time. Someone said they were bounty. Why? I don't know paper towels. Then he's passing, he's throwing out and passing out flashlights, which he said, you don't need any more, inferring the power structure was fixed, and we still know more than 90% of the island is without electric power. What a horrid statement on his part. Uh, and then he held up a can of chicken breast, as, and this is the food we are giving you. Uh, but he never went, again, to any of the areas hard hit that we see. We see pictures of him on the Internet. We see him in the newspapers and in magazines. He avoided it. Uh, So that's my story about that. Uh, I'm upset about that. I think it's wrong. Now, I want to talk about Governor Scott here in Florida. Governor Scott, bear with me a second here, please. Governor Scott... I thought was a lousy governor until Irma hit Florida. I have never seen a public official react promptly. This is before the hurricane, getting us set up for the hurricane. This man was on TV every day. He was in all parts of the state. He had his people organized what they were to do, how they were working with local governments, et cetera, et cetera. And you felt secure. And the guy was right in everything he did. And I've said before, I now have I have a newfound respect for Governor Rick Scott. No question about it. He's the man. Now, now we got a problem in Puerto Rico. Not really Scott's problem, but here's what he's doing with regard to that. The governor declared yesterday, Governor Rick Scott of Florida declared yesterday a state of emergency with regard to the one more than 100,000 Puerto Ricans that will be fleeing almost immediately to Florida from Puerto Rico. He's saying, come on, folks, we're going to take you and we're going to be ready for you. He and what he's done allows state agencies to take extraordinary means to assist these families that will soon arrive in droves, in droves, it's going to look like the Syrians leaving, in droves uh, to, to cities like Orlando and Miami where there are large Puerto Rican populations and perhaps they have families. Uh, He's already established, they opened today, uh, I'm sorry, disaster relief centers at two airports, Miami and Orlando. He feels that families coming to Florida as a result of Marsha, Maria, 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 are welcome and everything that's necessary and available resource-wise should be available to them from the state. He, and this this moves me here, he wants, he said, displaced Puerto Ricans, okay, matched with available state resources to ensure families are given the tools needed to work and provide for their children with a great education, okay? He's empowered the state agencies to waive all regulations that might screw up what he wants to accomplish. You know, I find it very interesting. Here is Rick Scott welcoming people to our shores rather than, as Trump has died in the past, trying to keep people out. Interesting, isn't it? He's welcoming them where Trump in the past has tried to keep people out, especially people in need, people of need. Okay. Now, that takes care of Rick Scott. I think I think this guy's presidential timber. What a turnaround I've made in a month. I am so impressed again with how he has reacted to everything. And he's got his things I don't like that he does. But these were big deal activities and he's handling them like he, he does it all the time. Uh, he knows how to act and react. Now we go to, let me talk about Key West and the lower keys here, because 
post derma. The lower keys took a beating. Uh, it was starting the marathons in the middle of the keys and coming down to Big Pine, which is lower keys, uh, and Summerlin Key, uh, Sugarloaf, Cudjo Key. They got the shit knocked out of them. I drove through there. In fact, we we in Key West are lucky. We are we were 16 miles away from a disaster here. In other words, what am I saying? These community. The closest community would be Sugarloaf and Cudjo. They're about 16 miles north of us on US-1. Big Pine's 30 miles north of us. 16 miles closer, buildings would have been down dramatically in Key West. We would have looked like Big Pine, Cudjo, and everything else. God was with us. And also, this thing came in. Irma came in at low tide in the morning and was only two and a half feet. It was supposed to be five to ten. Had it come in at high tide in the afternoon, we would have had another Wilma here also. Six, seven, eight, ten feet of water in homes. We avoided it, okay? Uh, but things are sort of happening now. Let me show you what happens post-Irma, okay? We're at two weeks, three weeks post-Irma. Uh, one is... You got a, uh, an RV, a lot of RV and mobile home parks here, and one's called Venture Out RV and Mobile Home Park. It's somewhere in the Lower Keys. Their damage was horrific. 659 units, all damaged. Many ripped in two or roofs completely off. So 70 totally uninhabitable. No power yet. Okay, uh, and this is three weeks post Irma, because they it's gonna ha they're gonna have to move all of these. Uh, mobile homes, etc., so they can get at the wires and re-put them on and then fix the mobile homes and bring them back in. And it's one of the few places where power has not be, been reinstated. Uh, also, they haven't got anybody to help them move all this shit, excuse the way I put it, because there's no day laborers available. Uh, they either flew the coop, or if they're here, they can't get around or get up there. There's no transportation that's available to them. And just isn't happening yet. Tempers are getting frayed around here. Yeah, people are getting upset. Now, I expected this, and it's okay. That's part of human nature. With regard to the debris, we got so much crap yet on the sides of our roads. First, the trees. The trees and the limbs, you have no idea. 20, 30 feet high, they're piled at 20, 30, 40 feet in a line, a five-foot break in 20, 30, 40 feet in a line again. And, and then you've got, the, you know, you've got the stuff like the refrigerators, refrigerators all over the place. Uh, this is in the lower keys. Refrigerators, cars upside down, boats on the land. Uh, a lot of work to be done. You've got to remove this debris. And you've got to haul it away. You need trucks to haul it away, and you should have experienced haulers. Well, they had the, uh, what community is it here? One of the communities down here, um, I forget which one it is. Uh, I think it was Cudjo, has their own full-time debris. He's a contractor. He removes debris by contract. But Governor Scott, I think he screwed up here, though, even though I admire him, gave out lucrative contracts immediately to big corporations, uh, contractors, to do hauling all over the state. Many of them are inexperienced. They don't haul. They do other things. They build things. But now this little guy who works all year uh, has a major has the contract with Cudjo. Uh, he he can't do the job because the big guys are coming in. They got bigger trucks. He can't afford to buy bigger trucks because he didn't get uh, he, he isn't getting more money. The county and the Cudjo says, "Well, we oh no, it isn't Cudjo. It's Monroe County. We got a contract with you. You're stuck with the contract." He can't hire people because the people who can work are now going to these lucrative, these well-heeled companies that are coming in. They're getting more per hour that he can't afford to pay, so he's complaining. I'm not saying who's right. I'm not saying who's wrong. Uh, let me say this, too. Uh, locally, statewide, and nationally, debris removal is a big thing, even without a hurricane. Then we have displaced boats, you know, boats that are partially or totally sunk. Through imagery that comes from the sky, one of those things flying up in the sky, they estimate there is one th there are 1,300 displaced boats. Yes, they're sunk partially or totally. They are danger to other boats. They are leaking oil, which is polluting the water. Uh, they already ha we don't have enough people to do these things. You think they don't have enough people in Puerto Rico, and we're making progress? They don't have enough people though to remove these boats. 
They have 364 ready for removal, but because of the, the, the manpower, they have only removed three so far. Um, let me talk about Irma and me. Irma and me. I have written a book, or I am writing a book, Irma and me. I did not stay for Irma. I took off and ended up in Birmingham, Alabama for 12 days. Best trip of my life, i got to tell you. If the book gets published, you will enjoy it tremendously. I'm not ashamed I left. I'm 82 years old. There's only so much I can handle. This was a five coming in. There wasn't going to be a hospital. I probably would have had a heart attack because my problem is a very bad heart, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not making excuses. Interestingly, Mayor Cates, Mayor Cates of Key West, said that of the 25,000 people residing in Key West, 20,000 left. Only 5,000 were left. 80% of the people in this in our city left Key West for fear, proper fear of Irma. Okay? And uh, the book tells you about my decision to go, then what happened along the way. I mean, the lines, the gasoline, food, got kicked out of a hotel, the hurricane was coming, where do I go, east, north, west? Et cetera, how the decision was made, how it was there, how we stayed on top of the hurricane every day, though, primarily through uh, cell phones, Facebook. Facebook was fantastic. We were writing to each other, telling what was going on. People would tell, we didn't have cell phones right away. We got them, we found out. And uh, what I found on my way home, the destruction between Marathon and Kudjo Key, you would not believe. I've mentioned this before. I may have mentioned it last week. I was told you're going to be shocked. You're going to be surprised when you drive down and you see all the refrigerators laying around because apparently refrigerators fly through the air with the greatest of ease. I was coming through Almorada. I'm laughing, but it's true. There's this huge tree standing up, but the wind didn't blow it down. About 15 feet up, laying on two branches, is a big refrigerator laying on its side. So the book's going to include the aftermath of Irma also. want to talk quickly about... Uh, death, 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 death. You know, when you get old, you talk about death. You think about death a lot. I'm 82. I think about it. It's inevitable. It's around the corner. Uh, my friend Liz, who's the only person I know that's really older, two, two people I know older than me, David Wilkowski and Liz. Liz is a year older. She's 83. She's been in the hospital for eight days. She was born a diabetic, and somehow, and she escaped. She had a chartered plane to take her to St. Petersburg. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> um, but anyhow, uh, she's in the hospital here for eight days. They can't control her diabetes. And I, I visited with her for quite a while Sunday, and we talked about death. And it, the discussion was not morbid. Uh, it was inquisitive. Uh, she has a fear. I, I don't seem to fear this. It's, you know, it's going to come and come. It's either going to be a great thing, I'm going to see my mother and father, or it's going to be like, like having surgery. You know, they, they give you that shot in the arm, and all of a sudden everything goes black. You don't even dream while you're under, and you stay, you stay black the rest of your life. She was dean of two law schools, very intelligent woman. And we, we spent the other half of our conversation discussing the National Basketball Association and whether they're going to kneel during the national anthem, the legal implications because the contract between the NBA and the NFL are different. All right. Well, this is the end of the show. It's too bad because I wanted to talk about Trump and Venezuela, how he screwed up their time. I wanted to talk about bankers and how they should be put in jail. Uh, Bank of America and how they handle local accounts during this problem, uh, and so forth. But I can't because time has run out. Uh, I'm glad I'm with you tonight. I'm glad you, you joined me once again. I'm doing a live video show generally once a day uh, on Facebook, Key West Lou Live. You may want to listen to it. It's about three or four minutes, sometimes less, sometimes a little more, five or six. Uh, I did two today because I got upset about uh, Trump on the internet on TV to rather today but uh, you may want to listen to Key West Lou live it's one issue boom 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 and I rant and I rave I thank you again for joining me I look forward to being with you again next week now you can't just call yourself an expert you gotta earn that title and at Wingstop we've been earning it for decades want the secret start from scratch Make to order. Sauce by hand in one of 11 mind-melting flavors. 
Serve hot with Scratch Made Ranch. Repeat for over 20 years. That's how you become an expert. Wingstop, the wing experts. Now you can't just call yourself an expert. You got to earn that title. And at Wingstop, we've been earning it for decades. Want the secret? Start from scratch. Make to order. Sauce by hand in one of 11 mind-melting flavors. Serve hot with Scratch Made Ranch. Repeat for over 20 years. That's how you become an expert. Wingstop, the wing experts. <laughs> 